Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight we're working on Module 7, Lesson Number 15, and today we are creating and determining the area of composite figures. Composite figures are figures that are not the simple figures that we remember from earlier in geometry, like squares and rectangles and triangles, but instead are figures that we might see in the real world that are made up of those other simple, simpler figures, but that we have to figure out the area of uh, including those complexities. So let's take a look at one of the more complicated ones from tonight's homework and see if we can work on that together. So let's look at the at number two. We are asked in number two for the homework, complete the top portion of each page. This will become an answer key for you to refer to when completing the bottom portion as a mini personal whiteboard activity during the summer. Find the area of the figure that is shaded. So we're just going to worry about number two here. Let's take a look at the shaded area here. Now we have something in here that looks kind of like a rectangle, but it's not a full rectangle because it has this little carve out here in the corner. And then there's this carve out here in the middle, another rectangle sort of carved out of the middle. So what I would, hmm, let's see. So I got to think about, we don't know the name of, we don't know any easy formula for this shape, obviously, but we do know the formula for the area of that shape. If we pretended it went all the way out to the corner, we know the formula for that. And then we could subtract that little wedge, and then we could subtract this rectangle, and that would leave us with the area of the shaded area. So that's kind of what I'm going to approach it as. Um, let's we'll take a look at this figure and see if we can figure out the measurements of everything. So if we think about just the big rectangle for a second, as if this corner weren't taken out of it. Let's see, we know its width, right? 16 yards. And we know its height, right? It's 24 yards. So I'm going to go ahead and say that the largest one, the largest part here is 24 by 16. That's the large rectangle. And then I have to deal with the two smaller pieces. Now, this one is a simpler one, right? Because this one they've labeled the length and width of this rectangle. So we can take that one out right away. So let's see, that's nine times seven. But now this one's a little trickier. How big is this rectangle? They don't label how wide or how long each of these pieces are. So we're going to have to figure that out. Let's see. The whole width of the whole rectangle is 16 yards. And this portion of that width is 11 yards. So how big must that be? Hmm. Let's see. If this was 11, how many more yards would we need to go to get to this corner? Let's see. We would need, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? If this were 5 yards wide, 5 plus 11 would give us the full width of the rectangle of 16. So I think we can tell, I'm going to do a little uh, arrow here, that that is 5 yards wide. Now, just as important, we have to figure out what the length of this side. Let's see, what can we use to figure that out? Well, again, the whole side is 24 yards, right? And we can see that most of the side, everything except for this part, is 20 yards. So how many more yards would we need to get from 20 yards all the way up to this line, which would be 24 yards? Well, we would need four more yards. So I'm going to go, I'm going to do a little drawing there to say, ah, that little part must be four yards wide. And that now gives us the size of the rectangle that we need to carve out so that we end up with just our shaded area. We need to carve out a rectangle that is four by five. Okay? So... This would be our shaded rectangle. We would start with this full rectangle, and then we would carve out this piece in the middle, right here, and then we would carve out this little corner piece right here, and that would give us our shaded area. So we need to do some math. Now we, we figured out the larger problem of this. We have read the problem, and we have drawn the problem. Actually, they drew it for us, and eventually we'll write it. But it's reached, we've reached that point, in, <laughs> which is always a difficult part in here, in between the drawing and the writing, where we actually have to do the math. So let's see, 24 times 16. I might do that over to the side here a little bit. Let's see, 24, I'm going to do that here in red. 24 times 16. Let's see. We need to multiply 6 times 4 ones. That's 24 ones. So 24 ones looks like that. Now 6 times 2 tens is 12 tens, plus 2 more is 14 tens. There we go. And now we need to multiply tens, 1 ten times 4 ones. That would be 4 tens. Four tens, and we need to multiply one ten times two tens. One ten times two tens would be two hundreds, like that. So add up our partial products, and we've got four eight three. 
384. So 384 is the area of the rectangle before our cutouts. And then let's start doing our cutouts. Let's see, we have 9 times 7. 9 times 7 is 63. And we have 4 times 5. 4 times 5 is 20. So that's going to be the same as 384. I'm just going to combine these two uh, subtraction problems, right? Minus 63 and minus 20 is the same as minus 83. And you know what? That actually gets very convenient for us. I was expecting we'd have to do the standard algorithm for subtraction. But 384 minus 83 is going to be 301. So when we write, I would say the area, oops, area is 301 square yards. Awesome. 301. Beautiful. Well, I hope you've had a good time here joining me on Mr. Kung Has Problems, and I hope to see you again next time. Take care.